Thank you for having the, uh, appreciate having the opportunity to speak to you this afternoon about what the uh, public health agency is involved in what we're doing in the areas of hepatitis C prevention and control. And basically I'd like to talk about what the federal response is to the prevention and control of hepatitis C, as well as, oh, this is up to me. Great. And also kind of see how this fits within the uh, context of an integrated approach to sexually transmitted infections and bloodborne infections. Okay. All right, so in uh, really public health is kind of a shared responsibility between various levels of government, um, local health authorities, non-governmental organizations, healthcare professionals, and the public. And the agency is active in um, <coughs> health promotion, health protection, and disease prevention. And we also work to build public health capacity and work with our partners across various sectors and jurisdictions to improve our capacity to respond to uh, emergencies and also work to facilitate kind of national approaches to public health policy and planning. So the uh, Center for Communicable Diseases and Infection Control where I work has a number of different um, uh, directorates and sections, and we specifically focus on prevention and control of uh, healthcare associated infections, tuberculosis, sexually transmitted infections, HIV, and hepatitis. Uh, so I mentioned about there being a shared role in public health, and generally we think of, well, delivery of health services generally is under the jurisdiction of the provinces and territories. So I got a list here of my problem is that I cannot see that. So <laughs> I've got a list of the various uh, government departments which also have a role in um, hepatitis C prevention and management. And three of these departments also do uh, are involved in direct delivery of health care services. Those include Health Canada, which uh, is largely known for a regulatory role in, uh, in terms of drug therapies and medical devices, but they also deliver health care services to First Nations on reserve and some Inuit communities, as well correctional Services Canada delivers health care services to uh, individuals who are in prison. And Department of National Defense also delivers health care services to those who are actively serving in the armed forces. So we've heard a lot today about the challenges to uh, prevention and control of hepatitis in Canada, and people have gone into a, a lot of detail. And I'm only sorry, I know Carla's given a great overview and uh, Louise about the biopsychosocial aspects and we haven't even, I haven't even mentioned that in the presentation, but definitely that's a, a big part of the, of the issue. Um, and as Maxime has mentioned, people have mentioned a large number of undiagnosed infections, uh, issues related to treatment, tolerability and side effects and varying effectiveness, as well as the economic burden of uh, diagnosis, care, and, and treatment, which is estimated to reach uh, $1 billion annually in 2010. Uh, as well, we've also heard about uh, solutions to one of the next problems, which is difficulty with accessing specialty care or, or medical care and services in general in some rural remote parts of Canada. And also the lack of comfort or knowledge about hepatitis C among primary or, uh, care practitioners. Uh, Canadian Liver Foundation survey uh, conducted showed that like approximately a third of practitioners, they kind of lacked knowledge or they felt they lacked comfort in dealing with hepatitis C. And uh, quite a substantial majority felt that their patients would benefit from more routine screening for hepatitis C. And in addition, there's limitations in terms of public awareness. Uh, they don't really understand hepatitis C, uh, don't know what it's all about, and may even uh, incorrectly believe that there's a ex vaccine exists that will help protect against hepatitis C. Um, so going back to um, 1999, in response to the report of the Commission of Inquiry on the Blood System in Canada, the Creever Commission, uh, this Hepatitis C Prevention Support and Research Program was introduced. And currently, $9.2 million is provided annually in funding, and that supports activities in the areas of research and surveillance, care and awareness, prevention and community-based support, and policy evaluation and public involvement. Now, following up on that, um, 
there was a renewal of the hepatitis C program by the government of Canada in 2007. And uh, subsequently, then the public health agency began facilitating a national consultation uh, with stakeholders. And when the stakeholders included uh, people who were infected with hepatitis C and concurrent disorders, uh, professional, sorry, federal, provincial, territorial governments, uh, professional organizations, community outreach providers, and academics and researchers and organizations. So the purpose of the consultations were to identify key areas for action, and the, the four key areas were uh, to facilitate capacity building among healthcare providers and community-based organizations, uh, knowledge development transfer and exchange, for example, in surveillance, modeling, or areas of determinants of health, and finding ways to respond effectively to uh, hepatitis C in specific populations, such as Aboriginal peoples or street-involved youth, and finally, facilitating action to permit early diagnosis. Okay, so I'm going to say uh, a little bit about what the agency is currently involved in in, in that, that context. So uh, research collaboration support, and we do uh, support uh, co-funding of hepatitis C research activities along with the, uh, the National CIHR Research Training Program. Um, we're active in surveillance and epidemiology, and Maxime gave you a good overview of uh, what we're doing there. And the Professional Guidelines and Public Health Practice Division, that's uh, the division that I work in under Dr. Tom Wong. Um, we're mainly d uh, focused on developing guidance uh, documents and resources for uh, professionals. For example, the uh, primary care management of hepatitis C or hep C desk reference that was uh, released in 2009. Also, uh, public health intervention research. Uh, identification and dissemination of uh, best practices in, in screening and treatment. Um, also, modeling economic analysis and risk assessment, for example, like the cost burden of hepatitis C. And we've had a, a couple of workshops this past year uh, about hepatitis C, one on the burden and screening in Canada, which was an opportunity to identify gaps and identify priority areas uh, for action. And there's been a great interest in development of a Canadian statement on hepatitis C screening based on a birth cohort approach. And the work from these uh, two workshops has helped feed into that. And there is an interim um, screening statement under development. And probably some of the people in this room, I think, have been asked to provide feedback and input on that. So we're, we're close to getting there. And we've had uh, a good response and good reception to that. So the idea is to expand screening efforts, not to do away with risk-based screening, although there are um, just the fact of uh, ascertaining risk, then that can pose a barrier. Physicians aren't comfortable with it. Uh, their clients aren't comfortable with it. Um, so we're trying to find ways to add on to what's currently being done, help improve on how people can do what's in currently recommended, and add on this uh, new approach that will help us reach and identify infection in people who, where we know that there's a higher burden of disease. Um, so as part of the efforts that what's has gone on to in the development of that screening statement, there's been an internal working group. There are the two expert workshops that I mentioned, the consultations with the provinces and territories and stakeholders, uh, systematic reviews and critical appraisals of other uh, previously existing guidelines, uh, considerations of benefits and harms, analysis of Canadian birth cohort data, and we've uh, collaborated we have with our modeling group and with uh, the surveillance division. As well, we've commissioned a cost-effectiveness study uh, to help feed into that. Okay, uh, just briefly, the micro National Microbiology Lab is also uh, involved in providing laboratory reference services. They give testing support for routine and enhanced surveillance. They're involved in uh, lab support for outbreak investigation. Uh, the Programs and Partnerships Division in our center um, does a lot of activities to promote awareness among professionals or among members of the public. Uh, they also expand knowledge among health professionals to support prevention, for example, in the identification of determinants of vulnerability to infection or identifying best practices for prevention. And they also fund community programs that address prevention. Uh, some examples are, and this has been mentioned already today, the Global Hepatitis C Technical Network, which fosters increased awareness and understanding and is 
exchange of information expertise between Canadian experts and uh, international experts. Um, some things that they're working on, tools and resources to help increase hepatitis C screening among immigrant populations. There's one project that they're funding that the Canadian Ethnocultural Council is working with five high-risk ethnocultural communities in Canada. Uh, to train the trainers, healthcare providers on hepatitis C and other sexually transmitted and bloodborne infections and developing appropriate, culturally appropriate materials for members of these communities. Again, to uh, foster an improved understanding, awareness and uh, entry into uh, screening and care. So I'd mentioned about an integrated uh, approach to the response to sexually transmitted and bloodborne infections. So uh, the next couple of slides, I'm going to tell a little bit more what we're doing in that context of an integrated approach. Uh, it mentioned surveillance and epidemiology activities. So one thing is the enhanced biological uh, surveillance uh, for hepatitis C and uh, related risk behaviors among key affected populations. And in our division, uh, we're really working with all the products that we're doing and the approaches to raise awareness of the importance of a comprehensive approach to prevention, screening, and care for HIV, hepatitis C, and sexually transmitted and bloodborne infections. So uh, one project we're working on, people mentioned uh, algorithms and checklists and things like that. And obviously, there are a lot of other pieces that go when I was speaking to uh, Louise earlier today that when you end up and you're having a decision about screening or, or treatment and who's going to be treated, that presumes that everything else has gotten right, gone right, and you ended up with the person who's offering treatment and the person who is you know, willing to take a test or willing to be treated. So we're working away at the parts that within our, our realm and trying to improve that. And one thing is with the patient order sets, it's like an electronic checklist that is developed by the patient order sets is a company in Toronto, and some of you are probably very familiar with them. But uh, it's kind of standardized best practice checklist. So if someone came into the hospital with a suspected pulmonary embolism, they'd have all the things that have recommended and shown by evidence basis that are tests that should be done, management and procedures that should be followed. So we are wanting to use that, starting with our Canadian STI guidelines, to have that as a way of promoting adherence and uptake to our guidelines and best practices in screening. So if someone has a certain risk factor or someone is diagnosed with a certain condition, we say don't just think of one if there's getting tested for HIV, you know, should you be testing for syphilis? If someone's been diagnosed with chlamydia or their partner has chlamydia or some risk behavior, think of the range of things. Think about the, the person as a whole, their their circumstances and what you can do best to serve that person and promote and protect their health. So that's a project we're working on that's very excited about. We're also developing a mobile application uh, version of our Canadian STI guidelines. And again, this is going to kind of integrate those things as a kind of a comprehensive approach to screening and, and treatment for a multitude of um, infections where they have common transmission routes and common risk factors. And moving on again to the Programs and Partnership Division, uh, they're taking a new integrated approach to funding. They're going to broaden the scope of funded projects to address HIV, AIDS, hepatitis C, and related communicable diseases and health factors. Oh my gosh, okay. Uh, another example, the integrated approach to various knowledge products like the questions and answers series we have for health professionals who are, are working with youth in the areas of sexual health and health promotion. Okay, so in summary, um, we all of us have a role to play in the response to hepatitis C and other STBBIs. Um, you can see here the long list of uh, things that I've talked about. And uh, effective responses must take to in into account challenges and emerging trends in the epidemiology and treatment, as well as the need to address hepatitis C within an integrated approach to sexually transmitted and bloodborne infection. So I've got one minute left, so I'll say, you know, for all the barriers and hurdles and, and things we have, I think it's an you know, exciting time. There is improvements in treatment. Um, I'm all excited with the th stuff I've heard today to take that back and see how we can incorporate this this into what we do, and certainly there are difficulties, and you know, inherent in working with the, uh, you know, this day and age with finances and everything else. But I'll just say, you know, we'd like to remember to not let what you can't do stop you from doing what you can. So thank you, and if you have any questions. Thank you.